Sometimes people don't understand why I mention fasting often. Is it because it it gauges desperation? It gauges desperation. Are you desperate enough to miss some meals? Or does King's stomach have that strong of a rain in your heart? Isn't that the truth? Let's be completely honest. That's That's the truth. Fasting sounds the alarm. Our lack of hunger... Our lack of hunger for fasting reveals our lack of hunger for God. And a lot of you are new, so I can do this again. But what fasting does, let me give you an illustration. Okay, prayer. This is prayer. You know where this is going, Phil, don't you? This is prayer. You can get some stuff done. Any guys that use this? At home, you, get, you can get some stuff done. But sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you got to, sometimes this, time, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Sometimes you got to hit the enemy over the head with a big sledgehammer. Sometimes you got to break the concrete, the rock, and the strongholds of the addiction. This will do it sometimes, but sometimes I got to get out the big guns. I got to get on my face before God Almighty. I got to do some damage to the enemy's kingdom. Sometimes this time does not come out except by prayer and fasting. It, 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 it is like a sledgehammer to the enemy's plans. It's like hitting a block wall. I can break down a block wall with this. It's going to take me a long time. You just keep hitting those cinder blocks. You get a little hole. little hole gets bigger, bigger, bigger. So I'm going to have to come back tomorrow. But sometimes you get right to the point. You add a little emphasis and that's what prayer does, prayer and fasting. I'm gonna leave it out just for illustration, you don't forget that. That's 25 pounds, that thing is heavy. But I'll never, my dad used to do that all the time. He'd tell, go get the sledgehammer. I come back with a little hammer, oh no son, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Guys, what we've been doing is not gonna work. Five minute devotionals quick little prayers. They're not bad, but sometimes, sometimes you got to pull down heaven. The principalities that have been unleashed on this nation. Joel prayed, and Joel fasted. Remember Joel? We talked about the, the book of Joel. Sound the alarm. Call the sacred assembly and cry out to God, call a fast. See, there was desperation. What about Esther? Before there was destruction on the Jewish people, call a fast. Nehemiah, call a fast. Ezra, call a fast. Jeremiah, call a fast. Jesus, be, why did Jesus fast before he began his ministry? Is it just, hey, I'm just gonna try this out for 40 days. Let's see what happens. I'm getting a little bit overweight. Let me have some autophagy take place. Get rid of some of this extra weight and just, you know, hit the ministry field a little bit lighter. I believe it prepared him for ministry. There's something about submitting the flesh in this area of fasting. And I get discouraged just like you do. So I don't, that's why I don't read comments anymore on social media. Sorry. But they go something like this, there's no hope for America, there's no hope for California. And I say, says who? I mean, let's be honest, says who? Because I know the darker the darkness, the greater the light. I know that God often, God often gets us down to that last hour. God's not worried. He's not, oh, I got hit by a right hook by the enemy. Now what am I going to do? God's not, not, not worried. That the power of prayer and fasting with intercession. Do you know what intercession is? Do we have Jeremiah? There it is. 
This is God. This is God talking to Jeremiah. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Jeremiah interceded. God said, I'm going to do this to the people. But Jeremiah, if the remnant just calls on me, if they call on me, that remnant, that's a voice I will not turn away. He told Moses, get away from these people. I'm going to wipe them out. And Moses says, no, God, stay your hand. I'm interceding on behalf of the people throughout church church history throughout biblical history when God's people interceded on behalf of the land God said I will stay my hand of judgment is there not 50 men in Sodom and Gomorrah I will not destroy it because of 50 men the righteous the remnant taking a stand it's weary it's difficult but it can be done see it's the atmosphere of prayer and the language of heaven that changes the game Think about this, in the temple of God in the Old Testament, the temple had one room so sacred, so sacred that no one could go in there except one person. Once a year. And he better have his ducks in a row and everything done right or he's going to die in that room. This room so sacred where God's presence was so sacred, going to intercede on behalf of the people. God said, you come here, I'll dwell with you. I'll meet you here in this tabernacle, this holies of holies. I'll meet you there. And that's what one thing that's wonderful about the resurrection, when, that, when Jesus said, it is finished, and that veil that separated that room, it was tore. And God basically said, now you have, you have access to the Father. That sacred room, now you have access to the Father. Wouldn't that change the way you pray? God hears the prayers of His people. So I expect all of you tomorrow at 8.30, we're having corporate prayer. The prayer room is probably not going to be big enough, maybe next door, here in this multi-purpose room. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna pray. I believe in a God. Who, it's not to come to church, hear a sermon, go home and go to in now Burger. That's not, that's not the scriptural course. Actually, have nothing. Try to fast tonight. Go home and open the Word of God and be hungry for God and begin to cry out for Him. He hears that desperate call. 